I was traveling in Europe and I met a former, I just happened to meet a former Monsanto scientist. I do that from time to time. Um, and he told me that when they found, they fed rats GMO corn and the rats had serious problems, the scientists rewrote the study to hide the effects. They didn't withdraw the corn, they decided to hide the effects. Well, he was concerned because the amount of corn that was fed to the rats in this study that lasted just 90 days is a fraction of the amount of corn fed to people in South Africa because they use it as a staple three times a day. Typically, Monsanto has a maximum amount of GMO corn of 33%. But in Africa, 50%, sometimes 70%, even 90% of the caloric intake can be corn, especially in times of famine. So he was concerned about releasing this GMO corn in South Africa, and sure enough, it was released in South Africa. Later, I was interviewing a veterinarian in the United States about GMOs, and he had told me these horrible changes that occur in animals as a result of their eating GMOs. But then he told me this story. He had a South African client, farmer, who had all these problems. He described the problems with his pigs and cows. He was losing money, low milk production, problems with the legs. His, cow, his pigs had like Alzheimer's symptoms. They were cannibalistic. It was just a disaster. So we gave him all these things to do and the farmer said, look, just tell me one thing. So he said, okay, never feed your animals another GMO again. So he started growing non-GMO corn. When he started feeding the animals the non-GMO corn, they all got better. He ran out of corn because he hadn't uh, planted enough, had to get corn from the marketplace, which was partially GMO. Problems came back. Then he planted enough year-round non-GMO corn, fed it to the animals, and the problems got went away. But his farm workers were eating the same corn. And when his animals were having problems, no one knew why he had to hire 20% more farm workers because so many were sick. Severe headaches, flu-like symptoms, colds. He was spending a inflammation. He was spending a lot of money on medicines and hiring 20% more farmers. He had to hire 60 instead of the 50 he actually needed. And the farmer told the veterinarian that once or twice a month, he'd be talking to one of his workers and the eyes would start to track in different directions. And he said he knew based on experience within one or two days, that worker would be dead. He had no idea why. When the worker started eating the non-GMO corn that was grown for the workers and the cows and the pigs, all the problems went away. When he ran out, problems came back. But the problems were probably worse when they were not buying it from the marketplace. They were, because the marketplace was a combination of GM corn and non-GM corn, because not every corn grower in South Africa was growing GM. But on the farm, they were growing only GM corn. So the workers were eating 100% GM corn three times a day. And so were the cows and the pigs. So they were the canaries in the coal mine. They were eating more GMOs than perhaps anyone on the planet, except other farms like that in Southern Africa. So this is a sobering, sobering story of what may be happening to us on a slower basis and what may be happening to the population. Now, I visited South Africa and Zambia and Namibia. And uh, in, in preparation to go to South Africa, a very interesting investigative journal uh, did an interview with me and it was called Nose Week. I love that name, Nose Week long, long article. And then um, someone who's a paid biotech person decided to, to challenge it and wrote this whole um, description, obviously had help from Monsanto, but it was all stuff that was lies. And so I then wrote a many, many page rebuttal to that. And it was published online 
in those week as well. And then I got contacted by someone in Zambia because I was going to a conference in Zambia. This major paper wanted to get rights to republish the original article in Newsweek, and I said, sure. So when I get there, there's a two full page spread, opening open in this newspaper, big newspaper, two full page spread of just my article and a picture of the president of Zambia in the middle. I was told by some locals, they had never seen an article so big in the history of their two year, two decades in the country. So why was it put in the government paper? They also arranged for the government uh, radio, the government television. I addressed the House of Chiefs with Mei Wan Ho, who was a great scientist who since passed. It turns out <clears throat> years earlier, Zambia was facing a famine along with some other sub-Sahara countries. And they had a law no GMO seeds, no GMO food. The United States, unlike other countries, instead of giving money to places that have famine, they send US made crops, which many people are angry about because it displaces and disrupts local production. And it's a way of promoting US interests under the guise of promoting famine, you know, famine relief. But that aside, they were going to send soy and corn, <clears throat> particularly corn, full kernels to these sub-Saharan African nations. And so the, the Zambian government created a committee to evaluate whether they should allow these GMO corn and soy. And they looked at the health and they looked at the environment. They looked at the trading and said, no, absolutely not. They actually went around the world. They went to Europe. They went and they came back and said, absolutely not. So they said no to the United States. Other countries said, can you at least grind it, mill it so that our farmers won't replant it? And the US said, no, take it or starve. So Zambia was able to get food from somewhere else. No one starved, no one died, and no one had to eat the GMOs. <clears throat> Thank goodness, because when you have immunocompromised, malnourished people eating corn, three or four times a day that's genetically engineered. We saw what happened in South Africa. But this was like blasphemy for the US government because this was a country that was, star that was supposedly starving, turning away the GMOs that were supposed to feed the world. And the US decided to do a full court press to try and convince them to change their mind. I interviewed some Jesuit priests there who had been doing research on the GMO corn versus non-GMO corn and came out against it. And someone lied to the head of the Jesuits in the United States saying, they said, let them starve. I'd rather let them starve and die rather than feed GMOs. That was a lie. They got Colin Powell to intervene with the head of the Jesuit order in the Vatican to try and stop them. They, uh, they sent all these experts, so experts, congressmen and senators. I was talking to the former minister of agriculture. He was introduced to Secretary Ann Veneman, and she was told that he was from Zambia. She looked at him and said, backward country, and walked away, insulting him. It was a absolute horrible time for Zambia because the United States was bullying them constantly, trying to get them to change their mind. I said to the minister of agriculture, next time they try that, he had switched to a different uh, ministry at that time. But I said, next time, if this happens again, contact me. I'll know what you can respond to. I'll give you the data. He was laughing. We had a good time. Um, so it turns out my article in their major paper was vindication for the government. It laid out the reasons why GMOs were dangerous in terms of health and etc. And when I in, when I spoke at the House of Chiefs, they have like a Senate and a Congress and a House of Chiefs. I said, my name is Jeffrey Smith. I'm from the United States. So first of all, I apologize. And they all laughed. And then I told them what some of the things we're telling you now. So that was very, very interesting visit. I was treated like a hero, as was Mei Wan Ho. And we gave them some of the information that they could have used earlier. Um, 
And it was interesting when I went to South Africa, um, I ended up um, saying to them, it's stupid for you guys, they didn't use that word, it doesn't make economic sense for you to import genetically engineered feed to feed your animals for export to Europe, because many of the retailers have committed to using animals, animal products from animals that are only fed non GMO. So when I left, they, that was in their major like their Wall Street Journal, their Financial Times. And then within three weeks, they suspended all imports of GMO animal feed pending a review on the economics. We also had an article about the dangers of bovine growth hormone, and it, it was put in every single um, every single tabloid as well as the main paper saying cancer in every drop. And then the major retailer said, we don't use it, we don't use it. So that was also exciting. So it was fun visiting a country and in a few interviews or a few testimonies or whatever, you can change policy and, and ignite, ignite a fire that's just fantastic. Mm -hmm.